What I do is we store all the BPS system, our flood mitigation system, for the World Trade. Every container here holds parts from the World Trade Center. It's color code, so when you look at the print, it'll tell you orange. You don't know where this goes. You know, that one there is either blue or yellow. It's going to tell you where that will go. The BPS system, what happens is you have a bollard, you take the cover off, you have this beam that's here. You have this is called one of our uprights. Everything's color coded and numbered to the post. There's a number on the side here, so you notice the number five goes on number five. We put the neoprene mat that's on the floor that's a gasket. It goes the full length. Right now it's sectional because you have to keep it open. We put the bottle down, we pin it, we line it up, we wedge it so it's straight. Back racing goes on, it's bolted in place. In the event of a flood, we'll start adding the aluminum logs that go into these slots. There's a gasket. There's a gasket on the floor. We have compression bolts that come out the top. We compress the aluminum logs down and we tighten these up against the log to push them against this gasket. And that will mitigate the amount of water that comes in. You should have some water, but it's going to be manageable water. Here's the 312 elevation. It's the high side on Vesey Street, which is really lower than uh, Cedar Street. Cedar Street is actually lower. So what happens is we put our BPS system coming around the wall here. Over here it's six foot. As we go downhill, it works up to eight foot. And then as we go up high over there, we're gonna be six foot again with HESCO. We don't have the BPS system for the uh, uh, art center yet, but we will. So right now it's being protected by HESCOs. So this whole thing is the same as the other side. Uh, BPS system, it's upright, it's back racing, uh, it's logs, and we have to remove like the ventilation box over there gets moved, it's in our way. And now with these new trees, they'll be in our way. And we'll have to probably trim them when we deploy. But uh, the whole system is the same. We maintain the water as best we can with our system. Anything that goes over the wall gets pumped out. And if you look on the ground, you have manholes. These manholes get Hesco's on top of them. Uh, the whole thing that we can try that manhole, we want to take the water out of and all the sewage and uh, stormwater manholes, we protect them so water cannot come out of those manholes if you get a tidal surge. Alright, this is the Hesco barrier system. We're putting this up uh, because this will stay up. We don't have the DPS system here. By leaving this up, it'll give us a jump on the storm. So if we do get a storm, all we have to do is continue the Hesco down to our BPS system. Each Hesco is five cells. Each cell is three by three by four, holds 1.33 cubic yards of sand, which is over 4,000 pounds of sand. So you figure this is gonna be six feet high, so, uh, excuse me, eight feet high. We have a four foot high here, we're gonna have another four foot around top of this. So you're talking almost 8,000 pounds of sand, the weight of, you know, an old Cadillac. We're gonna continue down here for another five Hestos on top. Then we're going to go down to a 3x3 HESCO, which a 3x3 HESCO is actually one cubic yard of sand. From the, that, once we get underneath the shed, we're going to transition down to a 2x2 HESCO. And that'll come all the way to the end. So being that we're going to have 8 feet high over there, we're going to have 8 feet high over here, we should stop any tidal surge that comes in. Something nice for the public to see as they walk by, because I'm going to see a plywood wall. 